stamp for this month. Uh, this would be April. So this is a good caddis larva pupa imitation. Uh, something you can use as a dry dropper or just straight nymphing or whatever you're doing. So most waters have some sort of caddis in them. And uh, so this has been a pretty effective pattern. So we're using a size 12 Daiichi scud hook, and this is a 3.2 millimeter brass bead. Tungsten would be nice as well if you want it to be a little heavier. And we'll start our thread just over the top away from us and snip off the excess. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna tie in some thin skin. I've got some mottled olive thin skin, and I've just cut a little strip right there and removed the paper off the back. And we'll tie this in. Once you remove that paper, it will kind of curve upward like that. And we'll tie it in just somewhere in the, the middle there. Just pin it there with your finger. And it'll slightly wrap around the hook. And then we can tie it down around the bend of the hook, just above the barb of the hook. And so it's facing up like that. We're going to pull that over the top in just a minute. Now let's return our thread in the middle part of the hook and we'll uh, tie in some chartreuse wire. We'll just lay the wire right against the hook. Secure that in and tie that wire along the hook shank all the way down around the bend of the hook to where our thin skin is sticking out. Now we've got both of those materials sticking out the back we can begin to build the body of the fly. And I'm just using all of Hare's ear dubbing. Really, any sort of dubbing will work, whatever color scheme you would like. So a little review on the dubbing. We just start with a, a little, small amount, and with our middle finger and our thumb, we'll start with the top parts of those fibers and just carefully work our way down, sp spinning those small fibers in wrapping them around our thread. We'll just begin building a, a tapered body as we work our way forward. It's always better to add a little bit as you go as opposed to getting too much and trying to take it off. And that's a common mistake I see a lot of people make is they, they usually start with too much dubbing and then it's a little difficult. Okay, I'm not going to go right to the bead. I'm going to stop just behind it, so I only need a little bit more here of this olive. We're going to use a, a different color of dubbing up around the bead there. Okay, so now it's just so I can just see a little part behind the bead. Now we can pull the thin skin over the top, and you can slightly stretch that and hold that in place and drop your thread over with your left hand about three times and just pin down or capture that thin skin and then we can hold it straight up in the air and bring our scissors in and snip that. Let's just make a few wraps just to tie down that little clipped end. Okay, now we've got our wire and we're going to rib this to give it that segmented look. And we're just spacing that out nice and even as we wrap over everything. And once we get there behind the bead, we'll just make one full turn. And let's tie that off. Again, about three times. If you need to, you can uh, take your wire and just helicopter that off. Might save your scissors. Okay, what we're left with... With this hair's ear dubbing, you might have a few whiskers and things. Um, we can trim those off just depending on how buggy you'd like it. Now I'm going to put some little legs or antenna, and I'm using this Brahma hen saddle. So all I'm going to do is just take part of the feather and uh, just peel off a, a small little clump. And let's, let's position those on this side of the hook, just so they extend about to the back. And I'm just going to pin those in with my thumbnail and come around with my thread and tie those in. And let's repeat that step on the opposite side of the hook. Try to get about the same amount. 
and we'll lay that in there. We've got two small clumps and they'll, they'll kind of stick out to the side or along the back and they're imitating just maybe the uh, legs and the antenna of this pupa. Now, to cover up this little section here behind the bead, I'm going to use this shimmery, uh, buggy, more of a gray look. And uh, let's just hold those Brahma legs back and just build a little, just a little area, just cleaning that up behind the bead. Let's just come back here just so we get a nice, even taper of everything. And there we go. And now we're ready for our whip finish, which will complete right there behind the bead and let that thread go down right in there behind the bead. We can snip off the excess. And there we go.